The research procedure is typically the most detailed part of a research description or proposal. In this section, we want to describe how we go from a definition to actual data. It's all well and good to have an operational definition. I mean, that helps us all know what we're talking about. But the question will ultimately be answered by data. So translation from the operational definition to data using the research procedure is super important. The research procedure is where we get into the guts of the process. Here is where, where we will really find out exactly how the data were generated. For instance, let's say that I want to count the number of times you can bounce a basketball in a minute. That might be an operational definition of dribbling speed, for instance. I can either do that by having you tell me how many times you bounce the ball, or by having you bounce a ball on a pressure-sensitive mat that tells me exactly how many times you bounced the basketball. The first would be a self-report variable, while the latter would be a behavioral variable. The research procedure is what really lets us know how a variable will be gathered. The research procedure will look really different for different types of studies. If a study is a correlational design, you will want to tell me your sampling frame. If a study is an, is an experiment, here is where you will tell me where your subjects were drawn from and that you used random assignment. Make sure you describe the study correctly according to what style of research it is. There are a few things you can go wrong on when describing the research procedure. You want to make sure that your procedure matches the operational definitions you gave. You need to make sure that the research is possible even if unlimited funding was required. Finally, you need to make sure that the research is ethical. If the research is unethical, your study design is incomplete. Keep those things in mind, and I'm sure you'll write a stellar proposal.